did matter arise from consciousness or did consciousness arise from matter? It's actually a mind-bending question. The question challenges us to think about what comes first, the physical stuff we see and touch or the mysterious intangible mind that experiences it all. Most of us take for granted that our thoughts come from our brains and our brains are made of matter. But what if it's the other way around? What if the universe and everything in it has started as a vast field of consciousness and matter is just a byproduct of this cosmic mind? Or maybe there is a middle ground where both consciousness and matter are fundamental aspects of existence, like two sides of the same coin. Let's dive into this fascinating topic and explore it with some fun and simple examples. First possibility, consciousness from matter. Most scientists believe that consciousness arises from matter. This means our thoughts, feelings and experiences come from the physical processes happening in our brains. Think of your brain as a super complex machine or computer. Just like a computer runs software, your brain runs your mind. When you feel happy, sad, excited or bored, these feelings are the result of your brain's working. Imagine you are hooked up to a brain scan machine while watching a funny movie. Scientists can see which parts of your brain light up when you laugh. Different parts of your brain activate when you feel different emotions. Happiness, for instance, might light up one area, while fear lights up another. It's like your brain has a special map for all your feelings. The human brain didn't appear overnight. It evolved over millions of years. Early animals had simple brains that helped them survive. Over time, these brains became more complex, giving rise to advanced abilities like thinking, planning and dreaming. Advances in artificial intelligence provide another angle to understand consciousness. AI involves creating machines that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence like recognizing speech, playing games or even driving cars. These machines process information in ways that are somewhat similar to how our brains work. Consider how AI systems like virtual assistants, think Siri or Alexa, can understand and respond to your questions. While they are not conscious like humans, they show how complex information processing can produce behavior that seems intelligent. This makes some scientists think that if we make AI systems complex enough, they might one day have their own form of consciousness. It's like seeing a glimpse of how our own consciousness might emerge from the complex processes in our brains. Neuroscience is the branch of science that studies the brain and nervous system. It has made huge strides in understanding how consciousness works. Imagine your brain as a vast network of roads. These roads are actually neurons, tiny cells that transmit information. When you think, feel or move, signals travel along these roads, carrying information from one part of your brain to another. The more complex the network, the more sophisticated the thoughts and behaviors it can produce. Neuroscientists study these networks to understand how different parts of the brain work together to create consciousness. They look at how brain injuries affect consciousness, how different brain regions are activated during various mental activities, and how brain chemicals influence our thoughts and feelings. Now we will discuss the second possibility, the idealist perspective. Matter from consciousness. Instead of thinking that consciousness comes from matter, idealists believe that consciousness is fundamental and that the physical world arises from it. Let's explore this intriguing perspective with some simple explanations and engaging examples. Idealists argue that our minds don't just passively receive information from the world but 
actively created. They believe that everything we see, touch and experience is a product of consciousness. Think about your dreams. When you are dreaming, your mind creates entire worlds out of nothing. You might find yourself flying over mountains, meeting strange creatures or revisiting familiar places. Everything in your dream feels real until you wake up. Idealists suggest that our waking life is a bit like this. Philosophers like George Berkeley argued that the physical world doesn't exist independently of our perceptions. According to Berkeley, to be is to be perceived. This means that objects only exist as long as they are being perceived by a conscious mind. Imagine there is a tree falling in a forest, but there is no one around to hear the sound produced. But now, let me ask you, does it make a sound? According to idealist philosophy, if there is no one there to perceive the tree, it doesn't exist in the same way. The tree, the forest and the sound are all products of consciousness. Without a mind to perceive them, they have no existence. Quantum physics, the study of the smallest particles in the universe, has some weird and fascinating implications that seem to support the idealist view. Some interpretations of quantum mechanics suggest that the act of observation affects the behavior of particles. In the famous double slit experiment, particles like electrons behave differently when they are observed. When not observed, they act like waves and create an interference pattern. But when observed, they behave like particles and the interference pattern disappears. This is the reason why some believe that consciousness might play a fundamental role in shaping the reality. It is like the universe knows when it is being watched. Many spiritual traditions report mystical experiences where individuals feel a profound sense of unity with the universe. These experiences suggest that consciousness and reality are deeply interconnected. Now let's discuss the third possibility, the middle ground, panpsychism. Some theories attempt to bridge the gap between the materialistic view which says that consciousness arises from matter and the idealist view according to which the matter arises from consciousness. One such theory is panpsychism, which posits that consciousness is a fundamental feature of all matter. Let's understand this unique idea with some simple examples. Panpsychism suggests that everything in the universe, from the tiniest particle to the largest galaxy, has some form of consciousness. This doesn't mean that rocks and atoms think like humans, but that they have a very basic form of awareness. Imagine building something with Lego blocks. Each block is simple on its own, but when you put them together in complex ways, you can build amazing structures. Panpsychism views consciousness similarly. Each particle in the universe has a tiny bit of consciousness and when these particles come together in complex systems like a human brain, they create a more sophisticated form of consciousness. Philosophers like Alfred North Whitehead and David Chalmers have supported versions of panpsychism, arguing that it helps explain the hard problem of consciousness. Why? and how subjective experiences arise from physical processes. Think of consciousness as a puzzle that is hard to solve. The materialist view struggles to explain how mere physical processes in the brain can create rich subjective experiences like the taste of chocolate or the feeling of joy. Panpsychism offers a different approach. If consciousness is already present in all matter, it is easier to see how complex forms of consciousness like human experiences can emerge from simpler ones. Imagine a scale that measures levels of consciousness. At one end, you have basic particles with tiny bits of consciousness. As you move up the scale, you find more complex systems like plants, 
animals and finally humans with increasingly sophisticated forms of awareness. Scientists could explore how these different levels of consciousness interact and build upon each other. Let's consider some everyday examples that might hint at panpsychism in action. Plants don't have brains, but they can still respond to their environment. They turn towards the light, grow roots towards water, and even release chemicals to warn other plants of danger. This doesn't mean plants think like humans, but it suggests that they have a basic form of awareness. We also know that animals have varying degrees of consciousness. A dog, for instance, can feel happiness, fear, and love. An octopus can solve puzzles and recognize individual humans. These examples show that consciousness exists on a spectrum, supporting the idea that it might be a fundamental feature of all living things. In conclusion, the debate about whether consciousness arises from matter or matter arises from consciousness challenges our understanding of existence. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, please share, subscribe and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching.